Scanners 3 The Takeover is a 1991 sci-fi action film from director Christian DeGay. The movie opens with a text crawl explaining what a scanner is. In the 1940s, a drug was given to pregnant women, which caused their children to be born with telekinetic powers that they called scanners. The children of the scanners also carried the gene. In typical government fashion, since drugs caused the problem, they figured the solution would be more drugs. It's Christmas Eve, and some folks are celebrating. Sounds like they wanted to play Jingle Bells, but at the last minute, decided, nah. Pretty sure it's public domain anyway. There's plenty of chairs around, but these douchebags decide to sit on the stairs and make it annoying for anyone who wants to go up or down. Joyce goes to answer the door, which has the most irritating buzzer ever. Her boyfriend Alex and his sister Helena are there for the party. Alex gives Joyce her Christmas present. It's really nice, but it's not what I meant when I said I wanted a pearl necklace. Back to the obnoxious guests, they're talking about scanners. Drunk Santa tells them Alex is a scanner and wants him to prove it. They don't believe him, so he does this. How would she explain this to someone? Oh my god, this guy just grabbed my ass with his mind! Is he Scott Bayo? Andrew Ridgely then uses his mind to push drunk Santa across the floor. I can't see anything possibly going wrong with this. This is what I told you, these guys are fantastic. <laughs> well, Christmas is forever ruined for this kid. After the event, Alex has updated his look to Simon Laban. Even though the incident was declared an accident, Alex exiled himself to learn the ways of mortal combat in a monastery in Thailand. Two years later, Helena and Joyce are out shopping. While walking through the streets, Helena is hit with an Excedrin headache. If she gets horrible migraines whenever she's around large groups of people, why is she in the city? While walking through an alley, they run into some muggers. Uh, that wasn't hair gel. Helena uses her scanner powers to knock the trio into a trash truck where they turn into mannequins. Joyce stops the truck before it kills him, but then this guy unknowingly finishes the job. Heh, Mob usually dumps the bodies off on Tuesdays. Joyce takes Helena home. Her white pants are awfully clean for somebody who was just lying face down in an alley. Helena's adopted father stops in to see her. He's been working on a new treatment for scanners to stop the constant migraines so they can live a normal life. This is F3, and it'll solve all your problems. But you can't have it yet. He tells her he's been working with a Dr. Bowman, a doctor who tortured her when she was a kid. That night, she's having a nightmare being in an 80s music video and realizes she's out of pills. As a last resort, she uses one of the experimental F3s. It's not a pill, it's an LED light you stick behind your ear. This immediately makes the pain go away, but also removes her conscience. She goes to have dinner with her boss, who informs her that he took credit for a deal she brokered. Shouldn't she have the F3 behind her ear? Since the guy ripped her off, she makes a fool out of him and launches him into the piano. Helena stops to have her hair done and drops in to see Dr. Bowman. Once he figures out who she is, she blows him up scanner style. Security tries to stop her, but she makes quick work of him. Ow! The other scanner patients see this. Shouldn't there be a lock there? She begins her sales pitch to get all the other scanners to start using F3. Won't her father notice that all this is missing? Over in Thailand, Alex is talking to one of the monks about becoming a Sherpa. The monk teaches Alex to control his heartbeat, which I'm sure will come in handy later. Helena's having a naked hot tub party and proceeds to make her father drown himself. Oh, this is horrible, and yet somehow also relaxing. I guess those shoes really didn't fit. Halfway across the world, Alex senses his father dying. With her father dead, Helena can take over the company and make more F3. Michael travels to Thailand to tell Alex he needs to come back to the U.S., an evil scanner followed Mike and uses his mind manipulation to get the locals to kill him. Alex fights the scanner and blows him up. With Mike dead, Alex heads back to the U.S. Helena goes to the lab to talk to Joyce. She can't make more F3 because she doesn't know the formula. Later that night, Helena's messing around with a co-worker. She discovers she can project her thought to the people on TV. It took three writers to come up with this line. Let's make it with a naked nasty. Helena's in the middle of hostile takeovers with various pharmaceutical companies. She goes to visit her old boss and makes him dive into an empty pool. Alex finally makes it home. He goes to the garage to get his old motorcycle, which of course runs just fine after sitting around for two years. Alex goes to confront Helena. She tells him to investigate the Bauman Institute. He's greeted by a nurse with gold cup winning mall hair. She takes him into the back room and please, dear God, start playing some Warrant. <laughs> This guy must have really good health care. 
The men in black show up and accuse Alex of rape, and they beat the shit out of him. They hook him up to some laser torture device. This must be an early prototype for the Virtual Boy. He manages to fight it off and escape. Oh yeah! Well, this is going to be an interesting chase sequence. They chase him through a shipyard, and he crashes into the bay. I sure hope that stunt guy got a nice bonus. They throw one of the guys in to make sure Alex is dead. Alex is pissed they wrecked his bike, so... Then night, Joyce goes home, and Alex is waiting for her. He fills her in on what happened, and then he fills her in. Are they making with the naked nasty? Alex tells Joyce about Helena, so she goes to the office to try to find some incriminating evidence on her. Okay, research. Evil, naughty, scanner things. Alex is waiting for her and gets kicked off the roof. He fights back against the scanners and makes them turn on each other. I hate this bloody city. Alex falls several stories onto the hood of a police car and is still alive. Helena catches Joyce snooping. She lets her know she figured out the missing ingredient and they start mass-producing F3. Alex is in the hospital. Ah, I see they have the machine that goes... That means your baby is still alive. Three writers, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to get you between the sheets. But this is ridiculous. (laughs) The naughty nurse is trying to kill him, but he uses his heart stopper he learned from earlier to fake his death. In the morgue, Alex wakes up and freaks out the coroner. Over at the lab, wait a minute. Helena just figured out the missing ingredient this morning. How do they already have a warehouse full of F3? Alex calls Joyce and, ugh, even her ringtone is annoying. (coughs) Helena takes over the TV during what I think is supposed to be the Super Bowl so she can control the minds of everyone watching. Whoa, football got a lot more graphic recently. They send a doctor on the field. Not sure what you intend to do, Doc. He's decapitated. Now with everyone watching, Helena strikes. Alex breaks into the lab and launches a security guard into a fake wall. He kills the guards and rescues Joyce. Alex blows the lead henchman up and goes after Helena. Helena shoots him with one of those Christmas laser lights, but he remembered his monk training and fights back. Then the wacky face showdown begins. Alex gets the upper hand and knocks the F3 off Helena. She realizes what she's done and kills herself. Alex and Joyce leave and Helena sends her consciousness into the TV? Huh? I guess they ran out of money because there's no end credit music. The movie was shot in nine weeks in Thailand and Montreal, Quebec, Canada. This was released a little under a year after the last film, Scanners 2 The New Order. Both films were directed by Christian DeGay. While they were obviously setting this up for a sequel with Helena as the main villain, This storyline was stopped, and the series continued with the spin-off, Scanner Cop 1 and 2. There were female scanners in the series before, but this was the first time there was a female villain. Helena was played by Polish actress Liliana Komarowska. She started acting in 1977, doing mostly TV and theater. After a small part in the American production War and Love in 1985, she decided to remain in the U.S. In 1991, she met director Christian DeGay on Scanners 3, and the two were later married. DeGay continued to cast her in his films like Screamers, The Art of War, and Extreme Ops. While I love the Scanner Cop spinoff, I'm kind of sad that they didn't continue Scanners past Part 3. They set up a proper world, and while they weren't as serious as the original, they still were well done and had plenty of head pop in action. In 3, Helena made for an interesting villain, in that she was under the influence of F3, which made her do all these awful things. It would have been interesting to see where the series would have gone with her as a ghost in the machine. Perhaps they could have had a crossover with Job from The Lawnmower Man. On second thought, after Beyond Cyberspace, that's probably a bad idea. Mind if I use your phone? Is it is it a a, a local call?